Welcome to Moody Motion. My name is Oleg Ibrahimov, and today I will teach you how to start animation from your own photo using Stable Diffusion. But we will go even further, and using this knowledge, we'll learn how to make this dope AI transition video that you probably saw trending. Additionally, I will show you how to use custom model to get photorealistic results, as you see here on my example. Wake up. For all that, I use Stable Diffusion in Google Collab Notebook, but this also works if you use Automation 11.11. If you're totally new to Google Collab or Stable Diffusion, you should better go to my previous video and watch the basics tutorial. So let's get to work. If you're using photo, Okay. If you want your video to stand out, you would probably think about some actions, some sudden move like jumping, falling, stunning in dancing, etc. I was looking through my collection and I thought that it would be great to use a video with Marta Bula, a great talented dancer. Check her out too. I found a cool accent where she is waving her hair, even though she has uh, black hair but, and Marilyn Monroe is, has blonde. Uh, therefore, I think that it did a cool job. So, you have to take the frame from which you want the stable diffusion to start animation. If you're an editor, it's easy as hell. But if you're not, maybe in case you're using MPC player, stop it, go to file and here is save image. If you're using it with the phone, you can just make a screenshot. By the way, I'm also uh, eager to make the tutorial how, how you can make all this thing on a phone. That is a banger. The second thing that you need is the idea. So it has to be somehow connected, maybe the pose of a dancer if you're using, or maybe yourself, uh, you want to see yourself as a warrior or as a old Ukrainian village man <laughs> or any other stuff. So here are the examples where I did a bunch of stuff with myself. And also I tried to use my daughter's pictures to animate, but I got some ugly results. I think that is because of the prompts. So I took the frame where she uh, picked her head up. After that, you go to your Google Drive. If you're already using Stable Diffusion, probably you would have the uh, the folder AI. I recommend that you create here an additional fo folder for your init photos. In my case, here it is, init photos. And there uh, I put my photo with Bula, here it is. After you go through the link under the video, you will get to the Hugging Face page, where is a cool analog diffusion model. That is a photorealistic model. You can get some information here and an examples what it does. And here is a link that you need. You click on that, that is totally free. Uh, after you download it, you then upload it to your folder with the models. Here it is. Inside the Google Drive, go to AI. Here is the models folder. You go inside, you drop it here. You are ready to go to the stable diffusion. Also, I will leave the link under the video so you can go and uh, copy a stable diffusion notebook uh, to your Google Drive in case you don't have one yet. And here is copy to drive. Now I will show you all the parameters uh, that I changed and maybe explain some parameters, not only copy, but also maybe understand how it works. Due to the AI news, now you don't have the option to use stable diffusion in a Google Collab uh, if you don't have the subscription. You will need to pay $10 and about that in my previous video. So here is a model setup. And now in a model checkpoint, you can choose out of a bunch of models, you should choose custom. And here have to be the path to your custom model. How you can find this? Click on that files. And after you click, you just automatically connect. After that, click here on the mount drive and here on the bottom. It will connect to your Google Drive. Give all the permissions. Wait a second, and if it's not appearing here, you just can refresh here. But in case if you clicked three dots and now you don't know where to go, here it is, content, and your drive will be here. Now we go to drive, my drive, AI, and find here models. Inside the models, find the model we uploaded, analog diffusion, 
click on three dots and copy path. You drop that path here. In this case, with analog diffusion, you have to use V1. But if it seems too much for you, it is totally fine to use available models uh, or which you are used to use. On the section animation, choose here 3D. Remember that 2D will also work, but uh, the motion parameters here I did for 3D. But if you use 2D, you should use angle and zoom. Maximum frames, I put 125. Just to make it easy for you, I will uh, copy these parameters under the video or drop it into the comments. And if you give a like to this comment, it will go up upwards and everybody will see it and can use it. Okay, so let's help each other. I was trying to mimic the movement of a gimbal of a camera. Translation X is moving the camera to the left or to the right, but the object will go away. So it's moving the camera to the left or to the right. Then translation Z is moving to the object. So I was moving to the object and to the right. So all I needed is the rotation. So I could rotate the camera to see the object all the time. And I think that it did a great job. I even tried to make an animation for Shutterstock. Created a brain and I tried to fly around the brain. The brain animation was not that good quality, but you got the idea. Now the noise schedule I put here 0 0.02, uh, strength schedule 0 0.6. Make sure the diffusion cadence is 1. Here are the animation prompts. And remember that if you want to deactivate any line, you put here Reshitka. So I put here Marilyn Monroe Actriz. Traje de baño hecho de diamantes. Cromo. Atuendo estructurado. Zapatos da plataforma. Where I found these <laughs> prompts? In the same place. Lexica Art. Here are my likes. I found this photo. Maybe a little bit too old. <laughs> so here it is then i deleted some of these and the results you saw on this frame 66 i changed a few words traje de baño is a swimming suit and i changed traje de baño to en el centro de atención what means in the spotlight input uh, photo is uh, 1080 on 1920 in order to save some render time i made it smaller 720 on 1280 it really doesn't matter what seed you put here it can be 10 i use this sampler but you can play with all of these Euler is also a good one i can put here some of videos that i did with different samplers so you can see some difference. I will test all of these and drop a video so you can compare them. Steps 80 is enough, scale 5, uh, name your folder, here put seed and seed behavior. When you use the iteration, if you render seed with the number 10, or every next frame will have 11, seed 11, 12, 13, 14, so on. But if you put here ladder, it will go two forward and one backward. Seed 10, seed 12, 11, 13, 12, 14, 13, 15, 14. You got it. I think that it did a better work with the coherence. The input settings, this is the place where you put your photo. You have to use in it give her a check mark. If you want just to use the photo, you can put here one. This init settings, it works only for the first frame. It means that the first frame will be 100% your photo. If you're using video, I recommend you to put here 0 0.9. So stable diffusion will rework only 10% of your first frame. Uh, here you put the path to your photo, image, frame, etc. Here are models and here is our init photos. Go inside, again inside, and three dots, copy path, and insert here. Actually, everything is ready for a render, except 
If you're not using any additional software for video editing and you want your video to be ready instantly, you would leave here an empty check mark and put here the number of frames in a second that you want. Just use some normal frame rate like 24 and higher. I normally use 30 because I shoot on Blackmagic camera 60 frames and then I divide it into and have a slow motion and no headache with the FPS. All is ready. Just hit run time, run all, and go, 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 go. Go and make your favorite banana milk latte. Your video animation from photo is ready. For video, you just need to connect to videos. I work in DaVinci Resolve. If you need any tutorial on this one, just let me know in the comments. So I added to video and that is how it looked. I also did a few adjustments here to improve it. I created three knots. On the first knot, I put reduce noise is from uh, a neat video. Yes, that is expensive as hell. I shoot videos for stock platforms. So in my case, I use it a lot. That is the best noise reduction plugins I ever used. You just pick some place, maybe somewhere that is lighter because there can be less noise. You go build profile and apply. As you see, it's doing a great job taking away the noise. So next note is the flicker. And here in the flicker settings, I use floral light. It seems to work better with the moving objects. If you are a free user of DaVinci Resolve, uh, I think that the flicker is not available for you. So keep it in mind. On the third one, I used a color vision lot. I will leave the link where you can find this lot. It's from a color vision collection. As my original video wasn't using this lot, I tried to make a smooth transition of colors. And if you go here on key section, you will see here gain is something like opacity in After Effects and you're applying this opacity to some kind of adjustment layer. While choosing this knot, put here automatic keyframing and put here zero, a few frames forward, and I increase that here to 0, 0.55, so the colors pop. Done. Now considering video with the dungeon style that you saw trending, you also need a custom model and going through the link under the video, you will get directly where you will download that dungeon model. You can also check this dark agent good man and find some more models. Here are more examples of what it does. And I think that the models are awesome. Look at that. Also, if you go inside, you can see the prompts to this example. You even don't need to think too much. <laughs> I'll get to that just in a second. Here are the other examples, what I did with the white screen. You probably will use it on your phone. So that is why I cropped my video into the vertical version 9 to 16 and exported this frame to a Google Drive in the proper field where I told you a few minutes ago. Here are some examples how the progress looked like and what versions also I did. I tweaked some parameters in order to find the better results. Here is our new path to our new model. You have to use a custom model here and the model configure V1 inference. Animation 3D, I increased the maximum frames to 450. That is why I also added a few camera moves uh, after a frame 300 and translation Z, X and rotation Y. Then also I added a strength schedule as you see here, it starts to be less similar to the previous frames because here I changed the prompts. I wanted to jump from one scene to another, but not so fast. So the transition from one prompt to another would be smoother. I was testing color coherence and I saw that HSV is better than lab or RGB coherence and works better with the original init picture. Let's go to the prompts. So here are the prompts that I use for this dungeon style, extremely detailed 4K wallpaper, blah, blah, blah. So of course, those prompts I saw here inside that model example pictures. So if you go here, click on the pictures, click it through, you will find some examples. And here it is, a medium shot photo of a fearful necromancer. 
Uh, I just added a few words here, portrait, drinking a coffee. And as I said, after frame 300, I wanted to change prompts, to change the scene. I added here a cute kitten made out of metal. Also, I found it here in the same place. You just click a few pictures forward and you will find a pretty cat. Here it is. Also, I added drinking a coffee. I just duplicated the same prompt to frame 350 and in a two seconds I wanted just to start raining. If you put here 720, anyway, it will change the resolution to 704 because uh, the parameters here have to be equal 64. Your output will be a little bit squeezed, but if you're using some video editor, it's not a problem at all to fix that thing. See it, doesn't matter, sampler. Euler, and I increased the scale. The higher number here, the more stable diffusion will aim into your prompts. Name of your folder, letter, nothing changed here. Here is my init photo. So I was tweaking some parameters and I got to this exposure contrast conditional settings. And here inside the quick guide to the forum version 006, some words about exposure and contrast conditional settings mean scale pushes the pixel values towards middle gray. Sample has values between minus one and one. In the same document, you can find the link to this grid. You will find that the maximum value here is 400, 200, 400, and one. So I just copied here and wanted to see if anything changes. You can see two versions. And with these parameters, I saw that there was less artifacts. That is it. As you watch this video to this point, I will ease your life and leave the link where you can go and just copy this document to your Google Drive. Also, in the next video, I will show how you can use stable diffusion through Google Collab Notebook just by your phone without computer just imagine going out and making some photo with your friend sit with your phone a few clicks and boom you got a video impress your friends impress someone impress your granny i hope you will be satisfied with your results leave the comment give me more motivation to tell you about uh, stable diffusion to maybe some shootings or working with the uh, davinci resolve have to use automatic 1111 just let me know these t-shirts you should remember these t-shirts my wife is doing please buy one i think that i will create a discord channel where you can share your creativity sharing is caring <laughs> okay see you next time <laughs>